morning, everyone. Uh, welcome for our monthly session of our live peripheral cases from New York City, Mount Sinai. I'm Vishal Kapoor, and I welcome you today on July 12th. It's 8 o'clock, well, 8 or 2 Eastern Standard Time. Uh, this month, we're going to give you an extra bonus day, and we're going to do two cases, one today and one in another two weeks, as a part of our monthly live presentation. So without further ado, let's go to the lab with PK, and let's see what we have in store for you guys today. Well, welcome, everyone. And again, I apologize for the confusion in June uh, because of our, uh, we had a, a really incredible month, uh, incredibly successful Link Mount Sinai, uh, the first annual that we did here at, uh, at, at, our, at our hospital in Leipzig, uh, University Hospital in Leipzig, Germany. Uh, we, had, we had over 800 attendees and uh, uh, just an incredible conference in terms of the quality of the cases as well as the quality of the faculty and the discussion. So in that, in that uh, how can you say, busy time, um, obviously the, the, uh, the cases, um, the live case had to be postponed uh, to, um, to uh, give us two in July of this year. So anyway, with that explanation, and I thank you for your understanding, and really thank you for your support over the years in watching this, but I want to introduce our team, as you, everyone knows, Dr. K uh, Kapoor and obviously Dr. Karthik Gujo, who's here with us, as always. And uh, behind me, we have uh, uh, Ray Lascano, who's our interventional nurse practitioner, uh, Elizabeth Holton, our, our, our interventional uh, endovascular nurse, and our endovascular technician expert, expert uh, Damien Cabrera. And of course, we'd like to welcome to our team our, our newest addition for this year, Dr. Sandeep Singhla, who comes to us from um, Mount Sinai, Miami. Uh, to, to spend a year with us um, in, uh, in learning um, uh, endovascular, and I, we're very thrilled to have him. So without further ado, I want to turn it over to Sandeep to go ahead and, and, and start the presentation. We actually have a very challenging, interesting case. I think there's going to be a lot of clinical decision-making in this case that's going to um, uh, help everybody to understand how to approach it. So Sandeep, if you could go ahead. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, we have a 73-year-old lady uh, with a history of hypertension, dyslipidemia, and uh, coronary artery disease. She presented to us with the claudication uh, of uh, three months and uh, left leg more ahead. than right at uh, half a block, Rutherford, category so three. Next slide. And uh, on and exam, she had a bilateral femoral pulses palpable, but uh, DP, uh, bilateral uh, left DP and PT were Doppler. Her ABIs on the right were 0 0.89, mm. and the left ABI was 0 0.76. Her pertinent laps, hemoglobin was 12.9. Platelets were good, 327, INR of 1.1, and creatinine of 0 0.9. So uh, we, we had some pictures done a couple of days ago, and uh, this is a runoff on the left leg. As you can see, there is a total occlusion uh, starting in the mid-segment, and it reconstitutes uh, right uh, where it uh, exits the Hunter's Canal, and then it, there is mm -hmm. a disease in the popliteal segment. <coughs> we have some more DSA pictures. Next. So this is just to show an inflow. So uh, uh, angle was good, no issues. Next slide. And in the popliteal segment, this is a DA, uh, DSA shot. Uh, as you can see, it's a, a very diseased in P1 and P2 segment. Okay. Next. So there is a good three vessel outflow without significant uh, stenosis, mild irregularities, but uh, nothing uh, tight. Next slide. And uh, further down, you, uh, it continues as a three vessel. Next. Uh, we, uh, we tried foot shots, you know, because of the slow flow, we could not get a good feeling of foot. We will try to get better pictures uh, as we do the case. Uh, so the strategy we have is we already have a right groin access with a seven French uh, 45 centimeter pinnacle sheath uh, up and over. Uh, the first thing is the lesion crossing. So you know, the uh, pertinent questions will be the wire choice and uh, what kind of uh, support catheter. Second is, uh, you know, it's a three vessel runoff and a long occlusion with a history of three months. Do we need a distal protection and what kind of distal protection? Liz blood pressure. Third would be uh, atherectomy, uh, if, and what kind of atherectomy. And finally, you know, there are always a choice of uh, a balloon angioplasty versus uh, 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 first generation atinal stents. But uh, in current scenario, you want to choose between a drug coated balloon versus a silver. Uh, uh, Zil, uh, silver PTX, uh, you know, we have Supera available, and the uh, newer could be uh, atherectomy plus DCD. So these are all the questions which are up for discussion. Thank you. Okay, so um, as you can see here, uh, so we can go to the angiogram. You know, so what we've done is we've just, you saw the runoff, we've gotten up and over, and we've gotten the, our directional catheter, which I think is essential to get to this level. 
and then I'm going to turn it over. I think I think the challenges that were nicely pointed out by uh, by Sandeep were were that uh, you know how how are you going to cross this lesion? What is your strategy? Your logic, and and then and then if you do cross, if you do, what are the challenges you expect while crossing this lesion? And then how are you going to deal with it? So I'm going to turn that over to you, Vishal. What do you, what do you, what, are, what, are, what do you think are some of the problems that you're going to face? You saw the reconstitution zone. You saw the occlusion zone. Obviously, proximally, just to, for, I want, Dr. Guja and I just took a little picture to show you how we crossed. We had to use a, a glide, glide wire and a steerable catheter. As you can see, it wasn't very difficult, but you have a very proximal tight lesion as well, which also poses another problem in terms of how you're going to treat the ostium of the SFA as well. So, so uh, Vishal, I mean, first and foremost, obviously the proximal was easy to cross. How do you, uh, how do you deal with, uh, with a lesion like this, and what are your strategies normally? Yeah, I think this is a very complex lesion. It's almost the entire SFA, including, like you rightly pointed out, the ostium. Uh, the biggest issue will be crossing. It's a heavily calcified segment. I'm sure he's going to do a dry floro to show to the audience as well, but it looks mm -hmm. like a very calcified segment. The only thing good here is probably is, is a little bit of beak and the collateral is not coming right from the uh, SFA. So my strategy usually is, uh, yeah, you can see that. So my strategy usually is the catheter wire technique. I'm, in this case, I'm not a big fan of crossing devices. You can definitely try it if you're comfortable with one or the other. But I usually go with a catheter and a stiff wire, especially an 035 wire system in here, and try to grow anti-grid. But again, the biggest challenge which I mean, it's not necessary, but you would want to try to keep it intraluminal because if you have to enter because of the disease segment in the P1, P2, you might have to enter all the way down into the P2 popliteal segment. Okay. So worst case scenario, we can go pedal axis and work from there. But I think, you're right, like you rightly sure. said, it's a very uh, challenging mm -hmm. and calcified lesion, and it could right. give you a lot of okay, trouble right. uh, crossing over and coming down. So uh, Karthik, what, do you, what would you do? So I would do whatever Vishal said is what um, what I would do too. It's the same thing. I think we'll try from above. I think uh, it's decently calcified. I think it's right. like I would say it's moderate calcification. I wouldn't say severe per se, but uh, um, I think we should be able to reasonably cross through from above. Uh, anticipate. The challenge will be how to manage this. I think that's the biggest challenge. Correct. What kind of strategy are we going to use? Um, atherectomy, the good thing is he has three vessel runoff. That gives us a benefit here. Uh, we might, if you want to stent it, then I think the stent patency is higher because of his outflow. Uh, but the question is again, DCB or DCB and leave it and see, give, give her a chance to see if uh, we can take care of it. I think uh, PK already has a strategy here. Yeah, so I mean, I, 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 think, I think there's two things that um, I want to just comment on that I see just looking at the in geography. I think first and foremost, I think that uh, you know the wire loop technique may not be the right technique here because I think uh, those of you at home have to look at both the, um, the, the, uh, the reconstitution zone. So if you can see here by just looking at the reconstitution zone, you can see that the reconstitution zone is, is heavily diseased. So you can see here, if you look at the glow tape, the true, I mean, quote unquote, angiographically healthiest segment is probably around 15. So if you go with the wire loop technique, uh, it's very unlikely you're going to be able to get through around 10 or 9 or 8 or 7. So therefore, you really want to try to stay in, in intraluminal um, or as, as small a dissection plane as possible. So this is one of the rare instances that I would generally go with a Viance catheter uh, other than for, for, direction, uh, for demonstrational purposes. Normally, I, you know, I'm a no-nonsense kind of person. I would just go with a wire loop, bang it through, keep my dissection plate di uh, as close to the reconstitution zone as possible, re-enter, and then do my work. But here, I think you have a challenge. Second, what, um, what we didn't show you, because of course we want to keep certain things a surprise, is that surprisingly the runoff vessels uh, have changed within a day. So here's your, I mean, I don't know whether it's because of underfilling or what. We actually have a better camera in this room. You can see here the reconstitution zone. Um, uh, you can see the Profunda fills very robustly. You can see that diffuse SFA that Vishal talked about. And then you can see the reconstitution here. Again, you can see very, very diffusely diseased segment all the way up to say around five. And then you can see when you go down below knee, surprisingly, you don't really see that robust runoff vessel that we saw earlier. You can see the, uh, the, the, the three vessel here, but then when you get down into the foot, you know, you don't really see it very well. So maybe, like uh, Sandeep said, it's underfilling or not. I have no idea. But it really seems to be really much more of a, 
of a single vessel mm -hmm. that, that yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. gets down there, possibly all the way down. So you, you do want to minimize embolization. So we're going to just try with the, with the Vions um, and go down with the Vions catheter here. So when you use the Vions catheter, it's important to use a, a, a directional catheter as well as a, a stiff wire. Dr. Guja has put in the, um, the Confianza Pro here for us into this catheter, and then we will try to see whether we can poke through. And if not, we're gonna have to do something else. It go, it's going somewhere, we don't know where it's going. We'll figure it out. Uh, we set around five, let me just go to a little lo lower mag here, see where five is right there. So we're kinda heading in a good direction. We'll see, we'll see how this goes. I think at this stage, I'm gonna ask Ray to track the catheter down a little bit here, create my plane a little bigger, go ahead. So, nope, it's not quite there yet. Okay, let me just go, see where this goes. So the Vions catheter is just gonna try to, I'm just gonna counter clock and clock this as we go forward. I don't like the way that's going there, but we'll see. Karthik, can you show them your hands, the way you technically yeah. use it by holding the three-way uh, system? You so do? this is, uh, so, so Dr. Guja is, or whoever really can hold, hold the, the wire in place, not allowing the wire to come forward. Ray is holding the catheter in place, giving me support. And what I'm doing is I'm holding this, this particular area and just clocking and counterclocking, trying to get this through. So what you want to do is you want to have space between the Vions catheter here, the end of the Vions catheter, and the, and, the, and the actual support catheter. So if it becomes butted, then the Vions won't move. So what I do is I hold my left hand like this and just spin and push. And when I hear that, that clicking noise, I go to the opposite direction. That's all. So now we're getting closer. Looks good, right? Yeah. So yeah. Let, right. we're going to give a little dye here just to see we have a normal creatinine. For demonstration purposes, let's see how far along we are. And you can see here, you can't see anything. That's another story. So let's do a DSA shot here, guys. So we're going to do a DSA picture to show you whether we're heading close. Again, it's important to see the direction of this particular catheter and where it's going. Because if the catheter is not heading in the right direction, then you can always use your directional catheter to change. And you can see right there, you see we're they're kind of heading in the right direction there. So I'm just going to keep going. I mean, right now, Ray's having trouble pushing this one through. So I'm just going to kind of keep it, keep it rolling here. And it's just rolling along just fine. The whole idea is here not to create such a dissection plane. A lot of, a lot of experienced Vions users would tell you that you need to get this catheter down a little bit further. So we'll try to push here. A little bit of, you know, American muscle, as they call it, right? Get it down there, and then, and then we'll get it down, and then we'll see. Trump would have been proud of that one. Oh. So, so, oh. oh. <laughs> a little joke. Come on, a little levity, right? So let's go DSA again. Don't move your leg. You're in pain, honey? Don't move your leg. She needs to pee. Okay, uh, that's important. There you can see we're heading in the right direction, right in that spot. So we're, we're going to keep pushing forward. So that support catheter is very important, um, uh, Vishal, because if, if we're able, if, if we don't quite get there, then we, we, need, we need to change our, our direction very, very quickly. Now I'm gonna stop there again. And remember, these are baby steps that we wanna do. So we just wanna keep on pushing the catheter forward. If she, does she have to go to the restroom? Yeah. Okay, well, can we, um, can we go, just keep, can you hold on one second, honey? Let me just get this wire through. Uh, give me a little uh, roadmap again. So Michelle, I think the most important thing is uh, it has to, like some people do this with... I uh, think we should fully the live case here. <coughs> Go ahead. Some people do this uh, Vyans catheter um, along with a trailblazer. So I think using a directional catheter is better uh, because you'll have more control over the direction so that you can push the, ca push the catheter in the direction you want. So I think all of us do it with... Uh, with the directional catheter, but there are some people who do Vines catheter along with uh, uh, a trailblazer. Yeah. No, well, I, I think that's the biggest advantage. You can yeah. find different planes yeah. if you I have to you because get, the Vines itself control. doesn't have any directionality. It's a straight on uh, head on catheter. So having a directional uh, micro catheter yeah. support yeah. definitely gives you that advantage of moving things around if you need to. So here, I guess, once we reach here, we have to decide whether we are subintimal or intraluminal. Here it looks a little. Yeah, looks promising right there. But again, I think it's more in the hand feel and the way the wire moves that you determine uh, whether you're intraluminal or just subintimal. But I guess you might find a little bit of resistance because that's also a very diseased uh, segment, so the wire might not. It's not going. Yeah. yeah. So what I'm going to do here is just try to advance the vans down. Um, I'm going to bring have this. Might have to extend it down. Yes. Yep. 
Is, she, is it a very emergent list? Okay. Yeah. Let me just see whether we can use the viands to get through. Yeah, I think so. Do your clue. Oh, I can't see. All right, go ahead. Why don't you do a thing? So again, uh, this is one of the problems that we uh, that uh, obviously with the viands, and this is kind of what we talked about as a, as a disease segment. When you have such a disease segment, uh, it really becomes even more difficult for us to be able to get through uh, with a, with a loop technique. If you're using a loop technique on, on this segment, what's what's going to happen is you you're just going to form a loop very very diseased, right. and that loop is going to go. Now I don't, I, you can go, honey. Is it all right to go? Yeah. Are you going? Okay, good. Keep so now. keep your legs straight now, honey. Yeah, straighten out your leg. Don't bend your legs now. Okay, now give me a little die, guys. We're already past five, so we're going to have to decide. So you can see here, we don't know where we are. Um, oh, wait, yeah, it looks very promising. Now we're slightly off, you can tell. So we're going to just pull, we're going to just try to redirect the vions. Hold on. So. Yeah, I know. Can you bring this out this side, please? Can you bring the mirror out? Do you? Thank you. That's good. Okay. So what I do sometimes here, Vishal, is because it's so diseased, stop at a certain level. Honey, why are you moving, honey? Stop at a certain level, and then just try to wire it with with my catheter. Give me a roadmap. So this is where different 014 wires may come. So you can try hydrophilic, you can try non-hydrophilic, you can also try, uh, you know, different you types of wire. Control. So I'm going to keep going with the vions here. I, I've, gonna, I've redirected the, the directional catheter, and then I'm just going to keep trying to go with the vions in a different fashion. Let's see if it pops in here. It seems to, let's see if it goes forward. Nope. Uh, no. Nope. So we're going to pull back. Yeah. We're going to direct the catheter the other way. There you go. Oops. Nice. You got to hold it on the other side. Yeah, yeah. No, the other side. So I'm torquing. There we go. Fix that yeah. ray right there. And let me torque it again, Ray. Hold on. Hold on. Let me go the other way. Okay, fix it. Oh. You can get the catheter now, Ray. Fix it now, Ray. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now just push it down. That's better. And that's now better. fix it there, Ray. So we're just torquing the Viance catheter in a different direction. And if not, remember, there's no, you know, you don't have to sit here and do this constantly. If it's not working, it's not working. You just go to another technique. You know, it's right now definitely not working. You can see it's going somewhere else. So I'm actually okay with this. I'm just going to take this catheter down. Not that much, right about there. Now I'm going to switch to different wires. So give me the confiance in the vions first. And then I also want you to give me the Terumo 018. Um, the gold tip wire, yeah, which no. is a great wire yeah. as well. So we're gonna we're gonna make a nice tip on this this it's this a, it's catheter. A nice tip, it's a nice tip. It's okay, so we have a good tip. So this is where the wire techniques come in. Obviously, you have a very diseased segment, so you tend to dissect all the way down. So the idea here would be to limit your dissection plane and get in. So there the question go. would be, which one? Uh, what are the wires that you guys go to, and what are the current available wires that we have? So we well, so yeah, go ahead. No, I, I guess exactly. The, the question really arises is when you're so close but yet so far away, like how do you do your That's wire strategy? In my case, I would probably start with an 014 and 018 system because here it looks, if you, I'm sure we, if we take orthogonal views, we're actually very close to the lumen. So trying to poke back into the main lumen will be a strategy. So using an 014 mm -hmm. or even an 018 to room goal like you talk about tries to find those micro channels or those small poke-in stuff. So probably a stiffer wire would give us a good support with a little bit of hydrophilic touch. So you can go anywhere from Astaro to Turumo Goal. I guess it's your comfort it's level. Okay. And of course, that gives you directionality. But that would be my strategy. Worst case, if you have to, we can go up with stiffer wires. And last case scenario, you can use a re-entry device. But in this case, because you have so much disease proximally, it will be hard to find it. But I think that will be uh, the strategy what PK is doing right now, is start with those 014, 014 08 systems and try to find your way back into it. And we are very close to it, it looks like. So I, hopefully it should be uh, easier more than tough. What yeah, this tough? is definitely not easier than tough. We'll see, we'll just, we'll I have full confidence in you, Peter, we can do it. <laughs> <laughs> see here it looks like I'm in. Right, but I guess that, the, that, another view would probably give you a little bit better idea of how far or. 
the wire movement here might not give us a better idea of where the wire is right. uh, the because we created a plane with the Vyans. Correct. Vyans is an 035 kind of a system. So you created a plane with it. So now you've Can created you a certain plane. Can you give me the thermal wire now? <laughs> so Just hydrophilic wires are probably better at this point. Yes. Wow, well, it's very smooth. Just sometimes, you know, you need a little bit more of a, a body weight wire. So, you know, go with the Turumo. Give me a, give me a, um, a fielder as well, a fielder XT, I mean, the XT fielder, which also helps us with this situation. So, again, the reason why we're being so painful in this particular process is to try to get the wire uh, proximally in if I can. So sometimes, see, the small loop also helps. So if we get a small loop like this, which looks pretty promising right now, which is different than the bigger loop that you're going to get with the, with the, don't pull the wire, I got it. No, I won't. Uh -huh. With the, the bigger loop that you're going to get with the, um, um, the regular glide wire, right? Yes, Looks like we're through. I'm just going to push a little bit more, let Karthik hold on to that. You know, this is also now, pull the wire out. Pull the wire out, yeah, pull the wire out. Okay, looks like we're through. No, I don't know. Okay. No, nope, I don't think so either. I agree. Try, try writing. Mm, I don't think you need to wire it. Let me see. It's very diseased vessel. Yeah, that's the issue. Is even though it looks as if it's coming back up, it's. We might be diseased. on top of the vessel the way the catheter is looking. You know, but you know the, the other perspective also is to say to yourself, you know, I'm already, I'm going to have to stand all the way up to this spot. You know, we're not through. So yeah, what difference does it make? You know, you know. That's it. That's it. No, that's no, it's the other the side of the plane, but that should work. Through. Little duck. No. Yeah, through. there it is. You're through. Yeah. No, yeah. Through. So. Nice. So Ray, hold us. Let's see if it goes. Yeah, yeah, and the wire behaves as that's your re entry point right there. One second, BK. The loop's getting know. huge. Yeah, I, I, no, it's, it's in the vessel. It's in the vessel, is it? It's in the vessel. BK, why don't you take another, another, another yeah, catheter? Yeah, give me another catheter here. Careful. Give, give me a, a trailblazer, please. Yeah. Give me a little die, guys. You can straighten that wire. I'm just out not certain whether we're in the vessel yet. Yeah. You can pull the wire back and try to straighten it out. Yeah, I don't think we're in the vessel, guys. See, it's not in the vessel. Yeah, Karthik, pull the wire give me, back. Give me a, give me a, a green um, yeah. torque, please. We're not in the vessel. You can put this. It's okay. So sometimes taking an oven for uh, balloon, uh, Vishal. Uh, creating a little bit of plane uh, might be able to re-enter it better. No, we're not in the vessel. I told you. We're not in the vessel. Yeah, yeah, no. the collateral. We're not in the vessel. That's collateral, no? No, we're not in the vessel. Oh, try, 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 try where it is. Not give me that. Nah. Go into the collateral. Not, we're not. Yeah, in the, the vessel. loop should have straightened out if it was no, in, the in the vessel. No. We're not in the vessel. It went no, into collateral. That's what I'm saying. We are not in the vessel. No. Nope. No, you're not in the vessel. You're right. We're right by the vessel. We're yeah. into the direction of the. No. No, we're not in the vessel. We're gonna have to try to re-enter here. Do we have the Pioneer catheter yet or no? No. Give me the. Yes, sir. There's a dissection plane right there. All right, give me the give me the outback catheter now. No, nope, just going right in there. It went into one of the uh, collateral. Trying to see. Now, man. Now, man. DSA. 
And Jack, don't open the outback. Because the wire went into one of the collaterals, right, right Vishal? Exactly. The po popliteal collateral. We are definitely no, close no, somewhere. We're no, we're still out. We're, we're in the vein. We're definitely in the vein. Yeah, the way it felt, it popped into something, like a vessel. But yeah. No, it's the vein again. That's definitely the vein. Yeah, see the way it's crossing the vessel all the way. Yeah. Okay, there we there go. There. A little better now. Don't move, honey. That's a different plane, what's our all Different together. plane for sure. All right, give me a give me a better. Uh, oh, that's the vein again. Give me the bias, please. I mean, give me the um, uh, the, um, the outback. outback. Give me the uh, uh, the Tarumbo Navi Cross now. I need to get further down. Give me the Navi Cross. So I think this kind of disease segment is going to be hard to hit with the uh, with the um, outback. So we'll try our best. You know, yeah, we're completely off. Yeah. All right. So give me the uh, give me the navy cross here. So from the reentry standpoint, would you reenter from the proximal end, which has a little bit of disease, or distally down? Because I'm going to try to reenter from the proximal end, if I can. Yeah. I guess the biggest question I, for the audience would be, we always have to give due credit to you the collateral. Right, that's right. Because you, you have the collateral coming yeah. at the P2 segment, so you don't want to compromise the collateral because then we'll turn a clotting into an acute limb. Uh, if you lose it. Yes. If you lose it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We just need to give due consideration to it and make sure we try to stay away from yeah, it. You, want to, re you want to re-enter re above push. the collateral. So if you stand, you're still standing above the level of the collateral. Right. I mean, worst case, if you have to do it, I'm sure we'll be able to do it and be successful. But generally, as a rough rule of thumb, it's good to be aware of that fact. So now I'm just going to gauge where I am in terms of the vessel. OK. So do you think a stiffer 035 system wires would have worked in this case? In case, let's say, like the 018 didn't work, would you escalate up or you'll just direct I, I just think that if we're dissecting with an 01, 01, 018 wire, where, why, you're just going to make the dissection worse with an 035 yeah. wire. Like I'm one of the what biggest proponents of, give me a field of wire. I'm one of the big, yeah. biggest proponents of, um, of not using, um, uh, no, I, I'm going to need a, I'm going to need a Spartacore to get down first. Yeah. Spartacore, and I'm one of the biggest proponents of using 035 in the SFA, but in this situation, you know, it's, it's not going to work because I think if you're dissecting with an 018 wire and, um, and uh, it's a vein, and a, uh, what is it called? Um, um, and, and an 035 wire, then I mean, and a 014 wire, then clearly the 035 wire is only going to make it worse. And sometimes it's also good to go with some non hydrophilic wires. Like right now, I'm going to go with the Spartacore, which is going to prevent the expansion of the dissection plane. So we know it reconstituted somewhere around, around 5. So I'm going to go now. Excuse me. I'm going to go now with the. And this is not going to be an easy outback. I can guarantee you that. Yeah. We, we might have to extend this down. And I hope we're not too far away from the vessel to reach the vessel. If not, we have to create a, another plane on top. So this is not an easy case. So OK, that's OK. That's fine. So yeah, that's the, that's the area that I don't want, where it's trying to go back into. OK, I'm just going to bury it here for now and walk it back. So the outback, as we all know, is a re-entry catheter, very useful in these kind of cases. Um, <coughs> so it's got the needle, needle fire needle technology kind of thing. So we're going we're gonna to go ahead and get the outback close to the vessel and then decide how we're going to get back in. Can I have a wet one, please? Thank you. So here it comes to you. I have it, I have yep, it. we have it. I'm going to pull it. Mm-hmm. So we're going to now take this down. Okay. Hold it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Show me above. Just around five, we know, is where the vessel is. 
they were right around five. Yep. We're going to go down a little bit further for sure. I'm just talking it. Okay. Now we're going to go to different views here. I'm just, I, I don't like doing the L and the T, so we're just going <laughs> to we kind of just enjoy a, a picture. <laughs> Inject. That me and Karthik know very well. He does not like the L and T. <laughs> so we're right on top of it, supposedly, right? Yes. <coughs> so what I'm just going to do here is just torque it the other way. I'm just going to just fire the needle and then get a, uh, get a hydrophilic wire, please, for me. One second, one second, one second. One second, one second. Oh, you can take it out. So we just fired the needle where we think it is. Uh, and we're going to make a little curve with the fielder. I think it's impossible. I know the LNT is what they'd suggest. To me, if you, if, you can, if you can use angiographic clues, so be it. So let us see. The whole idea, again, is to take a little time and not to try to advance this wire, uh, this outback further down. You might end up, like I said, closing this vessel uh, proximally because of the, the diffuse nature of the disease. So, you know, and plus the movement of the wire will tell you where you are. I can't tell you whether we're really close or not. Feels to me like we are, so that's a little bit too far out. So I'm just going to pull the needle back a little bit and then try. It doesn't look like we're there. So let's we'll draw this back here. Let's go to another view. Now you'll see, now, now is going to be a good example. You're going to see how far away we are. I think we're very far away. See how the catheter is looking kind of funky? So we're not as far away well, as I thought. Yeah. I'm going, to, I'm going to try to make it more of a T. But again, this may actually bounce out. No, that's better. Well, let's see. Mm -mm. Yeah. Give me a little road map here. Mm -hmm. Inject. This is the advantage of the no contrast, guys. This is the advantage of our, of our uh, what is it called, uh, no contrast of our um, Pioneer where you don't have to keep doing this, uh, giving contrast. The Pioneer obviously gives you the ability to just go ahead and fire this based on uh, where you think you are. See how it's not moving now? Let me pull it a little more proximal. No, it doesn't look like I'm there. Uh, no, I, no, I, no, I fell into that little plane. You see that? Yeah. You see a little die? Could be. No, nah, I'm off. Ready? Looks off. You inject him? You might be in and out of the vessel too. Nope, you're in and then possibly out. So let me try something here. Let me try to torque in this area here. Nope. No, I'm definitely not in the vessel. I'm close though. Oh, plane. Okay, hold on, hold on, stay right here. Let me just withdraw this back a little bit. That's not it. Okay, a little dyno. It's roadmap. Go ahead. I think the Pioneer will help you here more than the Outback. Agreed. In my opinion. See how far away we are from the vessel, David Shaw? Yeah. You can see my needle. You see the needle? So I'm going to try to advance. You might have to go down with the. Well, we were there, and then the wi the catheter was rotating. That was a problem. See? There it is. The intraluminal. Now we're in. So what I did was I just pushed the needle down further, and then and then pierced into the vessel. I think. We'll, but we'll decide. Well, I don't think we're in. We're out again. So no. we'll go to another view. It is not easy. 
You'll see. We're, we're going to be in that same plane. Ready? Hopefully I'm wrong and I want to be wrong. Inject. Hit him, hit him the head. Hit him the head. Hit him the head. Go for him. Hit eviction. Dr. Guja says we're in. Dr. Ray says yeah, we're in. in. And Dr. Kapoor says we're in. It goes into the collateral. Yep, right there. Good. There we go. There we are. Okay, good. So now we're in. So Outback saves the day. Now we're going to walk this out. Give me um, uh, 018 uh, catheter now. 018 um, uh, 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 Terumo, I mean, not Navicross, the uh, Trailblazer, please. So now the question, Vishal, we've limited our dissection. We've gotten into the vessel proximally, right? So yeah. now the question is, what do you want to do to treat? I don't think there's any reason for IVUS in this stage, no. right? I think everybody agrees, right? You agree? agree. It's, it's going to be very diffusely diseased. Yeah. I don't think IVUS is going to help us to determine the form of treatment. So the question is, what do you guys do? Is there a, is there a, a reason for atherectomy? If you, I'm, I'm going to pose a bunch of questions. If you decide to atherectomize, tell me why. If you decide to balloon, tell me why. If you decide to stent, tell me why. So let's start with Dr. Kapoor, because Guja and I have re decided we know very little these days. So we start with Dr. Kapoor. <laughs> we, we, we send it to the, the all-known. All-known Dr. The, Kapoor. The, the, uh, exactly. So, so Dr. Kapoor, the, the almighty, Dr. Your almighty Dr. Kapoor. can you let us know? Uh, my, my goal is all, I mean, I, in this case, I would definitely do an atherectomy, <coughs> first of all, because there Okay, is why? Why? Why and what's the data to support atherectomy in this? Even though I am not disagreeing sure. with you, I think it's kind of fun to challenge one another in this situation, right? So what's the data to support atherectomy? Well, we have the DART trial where we actually showed that atherectomy with PTA does work and give you... But, uh, uh, but the DART is what? Maybe 15 patients, 8 patients, right? right? I mean, so we don't, we don't have robust data with atherectomy, right? right. Correct. So... Yes. Ooh, Oh no, uh, show me above, it's not going. Can you imagine? Okay, give me a coronary balloon, guys. Walk it out. Oh, it's wow. not going to go. Take a photo, no, no, give, me, give me a coronary balloon. 3 0 coronary balloon should be fine. Yeah, give me a 3 0 coronary balloon. So go ahead. No, I agree with you. The wire. data okay. itself, yeah, if you look at it, is not that yeah. robust. Yeah. But again, at the end of the day, the whole idea is try to debulk the lesion as much as possible and do... Uh, so what's the advantage of debulking? That's, that's my challenge here. Well, eventually in this case, I would... I don't know. I mean, it's hard to guess, but there is a there is a decent to high likelihood that you might <coughs> end up stenting. Right. So, in order to have a better uh, initial lumen gain and to keep the stent uh, I mean, get its full uh, potential, I think debulking would help with easy delivery and getting the stent in place, especially if you want to plan to do supera. I'm sure you can do PTAs, aggressive PTAs, and get your supera down, so. Okay, so you're saying debulking followed by plus minus stenting right. uh, in this. Dr. Guja, what do you think? Um, I agree with Vishal. I think we should debulk for sure. There's no doubt about it. Though, uh, I mean, I don't know debulking and DC being is, a, I, even if you want a stent, I think you have to you have to debulk a little bit uh, because the amount of uh, plaque in the proximal vessel. I'm not worried right. about this segment. This segment, I think I've already decided to stent. Um, so my, my concern is the proximal vessel. Are you going to stent the whole vessel? This, the, the biggest problem in this patient will be not the outflow but the profunda. Profunda is diseased. So if, uh, if the stent goes down with the diseased profunda, patient is going to be very symptomatic. So right. you, might want, you might want to minimize the stenting as much as possible. Probably debulk and DCB the proximal segment and just spot stent the uh, uh, the, dis uh, the dissected spot, the re-entry spot. So I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna hedge between the two of you and say, um, the way I want to break it down is to break it down into what my goal is. My goal is to avoid a, a full metal jacket. That's so right. so my goal is going to be to pop it is is going to be debulking the proximal segment, okay. And, and avoiding, avo <laughs> try to avoid stenting the ostium. So, so right. go up here. So I think, I think that the idea here would be debulk DCB, the entire segment down, and then, and then go ahead and likely superostent the distal. Yeah. So, so give me the, uh, the, the other wire, please, I mean the other catheter. So now we just balloon that, that, that um, dissection plane, uh, that communication that we yeah, uh, were dealing with where we entered. So now we're going to go with the ONA trailblazer. Spartacore. And now we're going to put a, a, a support wire down like a Spartacore, and we're going to debulk. Um, then we got to decide on the filter. So do we use a filter or not? I'm going to. We're going to decide on the filter based on. Actually, you know what? Give me the uh, the the uh, uh, does the um, oh, three, five. Yeah. does the uh, yeah. Give me the uh, Navicross because I want to take a good distal picture. 
because we have no good distal flow. And I think this is an important point right. for everyone. Give me a bare wire, guys, and an Abbott filter. If we decide to use it, don't open it. So what we're going to do here is we're going to get this down. As you know, uh, all, all of us in, in Mount Sinai wrote this nice filter algorithm that was recently published in Jack. Uh, and that particular algorithm talked about when we would use uh, uh, this particular one. And long lesions, uh, clearly with, with compromised runoff, is a reason to use um, a, a distal protection device. So if we believe our own data, then we should go ahead and do that. So what we're going to do is take this down. And now we're going to go ahead and take some pictures below knee. Give me a, a DSA low mag, please. And let's make an, uh, get, get an idea of where we are. So let's, go, let's just go segmentally just to see what we're dealing with here. So I might be in a collateral when I inject this, but we'll see. No, I'm okay. So we have robust. Beautiful. Plus. Looks like three vessel down. I would not put a filter here. Yeah, give me a distal list. Uh, give me some nitride tool list. I'm going to go down to the foot here. Looks like the AT goes all the way into the foot. So give me a flush, please. I have flush. So what we're going to do is give verapamil because yeah. of the compromised flow. Nitro. And Nitro, I mean. So it's nitride, excuse me, as Liz corrects me as always. Um, and uh, so what we're going to do is once we give some nitride, one more flow, please, one more flush. And we're going to take a picture of the foot, and then we're going to decide. Flush. Thank you, brother. Okay, I would not. Uh, show, me the, uh, show me the filter. Uh, show me the, yeah, the, the I foot. I Thank you. I would not go uh, crazy on debulking the uh, distal segment. Uh, yeah. Vishal. I agree. I mean, just uh, because we, are, I, I know how much ever we atrectomize and DCB that that segment is going to be dissected because we re-entered that spot. I agree. So I think it's just mainly the proximal segment, and my yeah. whole issue would be how we fix the ostium because that should be the most exciting part. Whatever hard work we do, if the ostium or the yeah. inflow gets so very slow flow down into the foot via the posterior tibial and the anterior tibial. So I am going to use a filter here. So give me a. Uh, Give me a new glove as I touch this, the AT and, 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 and let's get the, uh, the bare wire down and put an embo shield distally. So I want everybody to keep track of time, okay? We've been futzing around, talking about, you know, old girlfriends and everything, and it's, uh, it's, 40, it's 40 minutes so far to get through this case. So, so you know, it's very cognizant as an operator uh, to keep track of how much time that, you, that you're spending on each one of these cases. This case should take no more than an hour and 20 minutes if all goes well. And I think part of that is prediction of what's going to happen. We know from our data here that this is going to go ahead. We know from our data here that this is going to embolize. So Dr. Guja is going to go ahead and put a filter down. And I think, I, th I think we also know from the discussion we have that we really have no reason to atherectomize the distal. So we are going to go ahead and, 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 and place, uh, place a, um, a, a DCB distal now. Pull it back, you're going to have to torque it into which, yeah, whichever, and nah, I would put it into a better vessel. But also, when you place the bare wire, remember, you probably have to torque the catheter a little bit more left. Yeah. yeah you want to go into the Yeah, I'd rather go to the posterior tibial. It's the most robust flow left. So pull it back. So uh, Dr. Guja is going to try to place this in the posterior tibial or the AT, whichever one he, he prefers to get into. Which, because I want to put it in a vessel that's got good flow into the foot, so I'm not going to get into a collateral and, and get into issues. So whichever one he decides to put it into, I'm fine. I just think his catheter is pointing in the wrong direction right now to facilitate him to get into what he wants to get into. There you go. That's much better. He's still getting into some collaterals. Yeah, there you go. Beauty. Uh, it's in that, that perineal that's that secluded. That turn of the perineal is yeah. there. So I, th I think uh, to just it's to finish my right. point, I, I think what we're going to do here is we're just going to go ahead and do a, um, um, a, um, a DCB of the distal, uh, atherectomy of the proximal SFA, supera of the distal, and then be done with it. So let me have a 50150 DCB, please. But before that, we may have to pre dilate with a 50150. Let me just see. Uh, before that, we might have to do with a, with a 50. Uh, let's just see. I think it's not making that bad. Yeah, yeah it's right. just a burn that has to go in there. That's fine. Just leave it there. There it is. Okay. Okay, good. Let's just take it out now. There you go. So how many times do you pre-dilate the lesion before doing a DCB? 
You know what? You know, I, I, I'm That's not very happy with the profile. I think Dr. Guja would agree. Both the Lutonics and the Medtronic DCB is, is not very good uh, in terms of profile to cross these lesions on an 014 wire, right? I know the Lutonics is coming out wonderfully with an 018, um, um, you know, um, Lutonics DCB, which is going to help us. And I don't think Medtronic is far behind. So at this stage, I think since we had that trouble, we're going to balloon with a, with a 50150, um, uh, what is it called, power cross, which is an 018 balloon, give, give us enough room, and then decide whether we're going to go with a 60, 60 no, 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 DCB. No, no. Yep. So, so we're going to use the bare wire technique to get this down. So now we're going to go ahead, we're going to work a little bit faster here. So we're going to go ahead and get this in. Whoops, sorry. There we go. Ooh, what's going on? Oh, I think you put the wrong end in. No, no, no. no we got the right end. So I think I think that's going to help us to get the 60 uh, um, uh, DCB down. Yeah, we'll get a 50 power cross, please. 150, and then we'll do a 60. And also, we have to decide where, which segment we want a DCB up to, right? Right. And um, and also, what size? I would DCB the whole segment. What size Sapara you want to do? You know? Um, can you show me a little die, please, as I get down to around 20? Yeah, pull that on 20. Mag up, please, and do a DSA picture of around 20 for me. You want a picture? Yeah, please. I just want to do a nice picture of the landing zone of the filter. Uh, DSA, please. So this is important, Flora, to see where the filter is going to be. Inject. I'm thinking right about there. Pull back a little bit. I think that's reasonable, right above the AT. Up, yep. I think that's reasonable, so we're just going to deploy there. Floor. Great, we're deployed right around 20. The wire is way distal. Now, now we need to evaluate the proximal landing zone for, for where we're going to end the DCB. So can you mag up one, please, for me? And then show me around uh, 18, and then let's take a DSA shot there. Flora? See where we where we're gonna end up. Okay, now give me DSA, please. So now we're gonna decide how far we're gonna we're gonna treat. Obviously, this whole vessel is diseased. So how far are we gonna treat? So DSA, please, Cindy, and inject, Cindy. So this this picture right now is made for how far we're gonna treat. So we know the whole thing is diseased, right? We know. So I think we should treat around maybe 15. 15. Yeah. Agreed, everyone. Yep. So now we made a decision. We're gonna treat from 15 on. And we know we're probably going to treat up to the ostium. So we made a decision. So looking at eyeballing that vessel, I don't know if you guys agree. To me, it's about a 5-0 vessel, eyeball-wise. Yeah. So, so now, now we're going we're to go ahead okay. and do a 5-0 DCB. If we can get away without a stent, I mean, I think that's fine. But as Dr. Guja said, with the level of dissection flora, I don't think we're going to be able to get away without a stent. So you can see the Abbott filter is so phenomenal that it's able to hold its own as we're going down with the DCB. Uh, as we're going down with the balloon. So now to avoid geographic miss, yep, there's a regular balloon. We're gonna, I know, we're going to be making room for the DCB. Go up. We're going to go ahead and balloon this out. And we around 16 is where we ended it, which is good. And you can see how diseased that segment is as Dr. Guja balloons it. You can see that's the area right there that likely is going to need a Sopera. But we'll see. But we'll first DCB the whole thing. And then, and then we'll decide. She's having pain with the five, though. So, but sorry, my love. You have to prepare for you have to prepare for the uh, for the supera anyways. Yeah. So I might as well just DCB with the six. Oh. I agree with you. Instead of using multiple balloons. Okay. Sorry, honey. Go to eight. Prep it up. Looks like it's prepped very well. I mean, it's expanding very well. Uh, calcification is just moderate, so it's not that bad. So would you use a 5 -oh or a 5-5 super in this case? Oh, we'd use five a 5-5. Five. Well, 5 -oh or 5-5, five five, I, I got to admit. Down? <coughs> I think, you know, Dr. Guja probably has more experience than you and me in deploying these superas. So I, I think that uh, a 5 -oh is probably going to be reasonable here, but we'll decide. So we're just going to... It's an SFA, Vishal. I, you know, uh, everybody says after you DCB, the vessel remodels. Right. So you want to use a larger supera possible well, 6 6 You want to go down a little? You're over here. You want to... Um, it's pre it's preferable to just uh, try to use a 5.5, uh, just in case, you know. 5.0 yeah. and 5.5 have a profile difference. But, you know, yeah, I, I, I also, minus. go ahead. Do you see? Yeah, just go up there. They're still go busy at the double. I, I really feel that, that this is, um, you know, a 5.0 vessel with the amount of pain she's having. 
you know, you know, you gotta, you gotta assume that the pain is from intimal stretch. Right. She's a woman. I mean, adventitial stretch. She's a woman, and I think that this is not going to be a 6-0, 6-0 balloon. So, I mean, I'm not going to do the proximal as Dr. Gu just said. Uh, I thought you want to work. You want to yeah, do it? Well, yeah, you want to do it? I thought the, for the catheters, we're just to ask you. And we'll yeah, dilate it. you just dilate the ostium. Can you do a little dive here, Chief? So we just want to make sure we don't come across the ostium so we don't know you too far. Okay. Right. Go, go RAO, please. Yes, LAO me. Watch your leg. Yeah, I am. Yeah, that's good right there. We're going to just dilate this. So to me, this much pain, I'm going to stick with a 5. I would probably go with a 5 0 supera as well. So you can see how tight this is. But even for 5 0, you have to use a 5 5 balloon. No, 5 0 is 5 0. 5 0 is 5 0. That's the, what you have to understand that when you use a 5 5 supera, you need to use a 6 0. But if you use a 5 0, if you use a 5 0 supera, the prep with a 5 0 balloon is usually enough. I'm generally, I'm, a, I'm in agreement with Dr. Guja that, you know, I tend to be a little bit more aggressive. But in this lady who's having this much pain, I think it's probably better for us to err on the side of uh, caution. Uh, it's a coronary, right? Yeah. yeah, please start. So now we're going to show the distal wire. That's, That's the good. best part about this filter. You can you don't have to float off or anything or check because it's independent of the wire. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and do one DSA picture here. Go ahead. And uh, there you go, I got it. I'll just hold it. Okay. Um, I think we have to move that pie, porta potty here. No, you don't. So there's your flow right now. I think it's a 5 0. So give us a 5 0 yeah, DCB, a please. 5 0 150 uh, Lutonix. You know. So here's our, here's our Lutonix DCB. So would you plan to do an atherectomy first and then DCB the whole segment? Or are you going to um, I, am, I am definitely going to do atherectomy proximally, distally. Myself and Dr. Guja have decided not to do uh, atherectomy. So oh, we're going to so we're going to do DCB of the distal, then atherectomy DCB of the proximal, and then be done with the case DCB stent of the distal. So right now we're just going to do this with a DCB, and then do uh, then we'll go ahead and do atherectomy proximally, DCB the entire thing. I guess we could have done atherectomy right now, but right. we just felt like we want to be a little bit more uh, confusing to everybody. <laughs> so and then just uh, the double for the sake of time. Well, you know, we had the DCB open, and, you know, so we'll just go ahead with the Lutonix DCB here. I agree. It was out in the sun, and We're you don't want to hang on. Another 50150, uh, please. But first, <laughs> I want the atherectomy device. So remember, it's important not to have geographic miss, right? So I'm, see how easy the DCB is traveling now? Yeah. So now I'm going to go a little bit further with the DCB. Okay. 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 So we're going to have to put a timer up, and we know she's going to have pain. Yeah, it's no more than a 5 or vessel. You're absolutely correct. It just looks appropriate for the vessel size, the balloon. So now as we watch the paint dry, we're going to go ahead and do uh, uh, a timer. Timer, please. And, and, and we're going to go ahead and do a, um, we're going to get the Supera. So get us a 50150 Supera ready. And open up the atherectomy device, please. Yeah, but I think this is enough for Supera. We'll atherectomize DCB the rest and then Supera at the end. So our steps are going to be, so right now, if, um, if you can put me on coronary, uh, this is around, say, 31. So our steps are going to be to atherectomize till 31, um, two of uh, four passes, uh, four different areas, and then go ahead and do a, uh, a Supera distally up to 31, hopefully and then DCB the rest. That's going to be our steps. And then hopefully we'll be out of Dodge by, say, 9.30. Down? Oh, no, it's not down yet. So the, 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 the rate limiting process is going to be the nine minutes we're going to spend on, on DCBing this thing. So you, we have to subtract nine minutes from, uh, from our thing. But I think this case, Vishal, really uh, illustrates you know, the, the difficulties that you have. I mean, you saw very clearly how we illustrated how we're going to cross this lesion. We didn't extend the dissection plane. I mean, we were dissecting, but we weren't in the, in the luminance. All those dissections were outside the vessel. So, so when we did get in, we got in proximally. And now, but we're treating the whole thing as if we, we, the disease segment without extending the stent distal. So I am trying to leave the stent above 15. I'm going to ask Dr. Guja to deploy it from 15 up. 
and then we can go ahead and DCB the rest. So, so I, th I think that, you know, it, if to me, this repair is phenomenal wherever you land it. I don't think it's going to fracture. So even if we had to go to, say, 16 or 17, I think you'd Absolutely. be okay here with the Supera. I think that that's going to be the, the idea. No. PK and Vishal, I want to ask you a question. So let's say you have a patient like this, like we see it all the time, okay. um, and then you have one vessel runoff, and that one vessel has, yeah. is also diseased. Would you, you, would, you, would you treat that tibial, sec tibial vessel? I lost the question. What's that? What's the question? You have diseased vessel like this. Mm -hmm. You have three vessels. Two vessels are CTO. Like technically, this vessel, the AT is almost like CTO in the bottom, low flow. Peroneal vino is severely diseased. If the PT had disease, would you treat the PT segment for the outflow, for would the sake of outflow? Vishal, what down, would you do? Down. Well, I guess the question is, what's the presentation? If the Excuse presentation me? is mainly yeah. claudication. Oh, let's say it's claudication only. Right. So for me, if the presentation is mainly claudication and uh, if you've done enough work or use dye or whatever, if those are not the rate limiting factors, my goal is to improve the inflow and see how it does. But in, if it's usually a one vessel runoff and if, I've, and if it's below the knee has like not so much like another CT or maybe some disease which we can do a PTA, I would definitely want to improve the outflow at the same time. But in case I have restrictions because of uh, uh, your dye or radiation or time or anything, then we, you could probably uh, but you stop would, at the SFA. But, but you would treat the tibial segment? If uh, if there's just one vessel flow and that one vessel has disease, yes, I would definitely want to treat the tibial segment. You would? Well, I mean, I mean, it, what you are, so you have no no open vessels below the knee and you just treated the inflow? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. And I will say you have PT only and the PT has a tight lesion. So you have a solitary PT, occluded AT perineal, and a tight right. lesion in the PT. Right. I think it's reasonable to treat it. I don't right. think it's wrong to treat it. I mean, I think conventional wisdom would say don't treat it. Right. Um, but I mean, how many times have we have we seen that um, that uh, that may not be true? So I think yeah, I think I think you know, the problem here is you see the issue becomes is what's your patency? Okay. So so you know in the SFA if you do a, a DCB if you do a DCB and you say you have a, long, a reasonable segment that's at least been studied by randomized controlled trials, you can predict your five-year patency based on the Medtronic data, mm -hmm. right? However, if you, if you treat a, a below knee with angioplasty, you, your data is not very, very good. With right. the atherectomy, if it's, below, if it's below eight centimeters, then you know you have about an 80% patency at one year as per the definitive LE data. So, so I think it depends. I mean, it depends on the clinical syndrome. If you have no vessel runoff, and a 99% posterior tibial artery, I don't know if anybody can really fault you. A little die here, guys. I don't know if anybody can really fault you for treating that PT, but I think you have to understand that, that your data, I should go to the LAO yeah, view, yeah. the data does watch not support watch you watch doing that. So, I'm not, yeah, I'm good. A little, da little data, a little data, please. So I think you need to be careful in saying that you would. I'm not saying you're wrong, on. I'm not saying you're wrong. I think you just need to be careful, understanding that you could, you know, make things worse for this patient. But is, let me ask you this, like um, as a follow-up yeah, question, nope, is there yeah. any data on the outflow being a determining factor for a patency of a stent or a DCD? I mean, at this stage, no, there is no data about that. I know Marianne Broadman in Graz has been doing that for a long time. Down, torque it back again. So you can see here that, that, that this catheter is rotating like crazy. As we know, our data again has shown um, that this is one of the problems with this atherectomy catheter, that it rotates. Uh, rotated back to the same plane. Thank you. On, and I think you have to be very, very careful. We said we'd do up to 30, so I'm going to stop short off. So I'm going to come back up and do one more cut on the other end. I'm not going to come all the way to the ostium. So, so I think you, I think, the, but then you can also I'll argue, well, Prakash, there's no data to do what you're doing right now. Oh. You know, <laughs> who has studied this long segment with uh, <laughs> with popliteal <laughs> involvement? Little yeah, diaphragm, puff. Right. So nobody studied this either. Yeah, so on. Yeah. Okay, huh? That's fine. So nobody studied this either. So, you know, I think in a randomized controlled fashion, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of data to support everything that we're doing. Off, on. So I think, you know, a lot of clinical judgment comes into play when we're doing this. Off, on. That's fine. No, no, no. On. So because um, Vishal and PK for both, Vishal uh, mainly for you because Off. PK is doing this. Off. So if you have, if you have a, let's say you stented everybody. You stented DSA? this patient, you didn't treat the tibial segment. Patient still has persistent claudication, DSA? which they can, right? Technically, they say if you have one vessel runoff, is that one vessel has the disease. According to the SVS guidelines, uh, you can still fix that tibial vessel, right? Sky guidelines. Sky, sky guidelines, guidelines, sorry, sky guidelines. 
looks like you have a filling defect approximately. Yeah, that's okay, give me. We, we didn't cut it. Oh, we did cut that area. No, we cut we laterally. No, we yes, didn't. we did. We didn't. We didn't. Laterally, we did. Below or on 10, we did. Yeah. All right, give me a, give me a 605-0150 balloon, please. So, so sky guidelines say you can, but I, I'm, what I'm trying to explain is that, is that yeah, it makes sense, but, but if you look at the, the blood supply to the soleus muscle, the soleus muscle is, is supplied by the sural artery, right? So, uh, so that artery is gonna be a branch of the popliteal or the geniculate. So, so technically, you shouldn't get, you shouldn't get claudication from, uh, from below knee. I thought that was the theory a uh, couple of years ago, right? We can now they say that even uh, the sural artery can get a lot of collateral supply even from the tibial vessels. Could, but so I, technically, I, but, but, if you but, have a lot of tibial disease. But then I think that's why you fix the. I'm not saying this is. I'm saying to, to err on the side of caution in a clot again. I'm right. saying that you could fix your tibial, your your SFA, see how the patient does. Right. If the patient is having persistent claudication. Then you could say, okay, I've done the best I can with my inflow. I do have a, a easily amenable uh, lesion from, from the outflow perspective. Let yeah. me go out to the outflow and take care of it. That's what 30, I would do. 30. Yeah, 30, 30 plus. So we're going to do, an, uh, give me another, another Lutonix, please. So I think, I think that's probably reasonable in terms of an approach. Uh, 50. We'll just do overlap. Actually, give me a six. No, give me a five. Five, oh, five, oh, five, oh. five oh. Go to 10, 12, 14. Yeah. So, okay, now start the timer, guys. So you can see here that, uh, you know, this is drug coated balloon. Can you put, uh, come off, uh, come off the, uh, the, um, the uh, give me coronary? Yeah. So again, I want to avoid geographic miss. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get away with, without stenting the ostium just because of the way it looks. So maybe we should just put a zilber. No, that would be my thought process. What? I think that would be my thought process as well. Just take a better picture of the ostium, but probably that would need more than a DCB itself. Yeah, so let's not open the DCB yet, guys. Let's, uh, let's uh, go ahead and do a, um, um, uh, maybe a zilber up, up top. You can balloon with this. And, and see, then see how it looks. see how it looks. Karthik read my mind again. All right, so that's a good question. I like that. So what's your anticoag anticoagulation strategy for these patients? I usually do dual antiplatelet therapy at least for three months if I do a DCB. If I do a Zilver, I try to prolong it to six months. Again, like you're going to ask me where the data is, and there is no real data. But uh, just to err on the I side of being it. cautious, I try to prolong it as three much months. as uh, possible. So. That's my strategy per se, unless there is something different thought process. Karthik? Um, I usually give it for one month. I actually, even if it's even if it's silver, I just give it for one month and just stop it. It's like, it depends. I mean, the patients can all, most of, most of, at least my patients are coronary patients. Right. They already have the uh, coronary stent, so we just prolong. But if they're pure claudicans and I just put a silver, I just do it for one month and just leave it. Just like any other bare metal. Even for DCB, same thing. I usually never give it for more than a month. I, I usually put them on pleatel all the time. I never stop pleatel at least for one year after the intervention. There's no data on it, but- Damien is sleeping. I've just, I've, I've just felt like uh, pleatel does a very good job with the symptoms. Well, that's been definitely proven even with the yeah. trials that pleatel works better and increases your walking distance yeah. capacity, especially the six minutes. So it's a great medication. Okay, we're just going to balloon the ostium. So for us, we follow, we're very guideline oriented, like the two of you. Uh, <laughs> we, we go one month for DCB and three months for, uh, for, uh, for Zilver PTX. So, <coughs> give me a little die up top. I just follow the guidelines twice, so that's why I do it. <laughs> I just cut the guidelines by half, you know. Okay, go ahead here. Okay, go ahead, right here. <coughs> so we're just ballooning this to see how the ostium reacts, um, obviously, to, this, uh, to a big balloon. If I can get a good result with this, then I'll go with the DCB. If I don't get a good result with this, then I'm just going to go ahead with a uh, Zilver PTX bracket. Yeah, I guess for me, in cases like these, when you've done so much hard work and crossed over, especially this ostium could get you eventually down the line of trouble. So I'm probably more aggressive in just stenting the, even like a short stent at the ostium just to maintain my inflow. Yeah, that's that's yeah, my usual strategy is just doing a short stent on the you ostium, the make sure my inflow is well established, and that. then we take it from there. I mean, I love the DCB, no doubt about it. But again, hard work. Well, it looks like it looks clearly like uh, what uh, I was just I was just examining 
the, uh, the expansion of the balloon. And what Dr. Gujo is saying is true is that you're having a little bit of recoil. Yeah. Um, we're going to have a lot of recoil see, from here. Uh, 15, if you see the balloon expansion, Richard, <laughs> right? Down. From 12 to 5, there's see how the vessel looks low. I mean, the balloon doesn't expand at all. Yeah, it's probably very fibronic, right? right? Exactly. And you know yeah, clearly I mean, that's uh, the that tightest uh, part. But at that stage, you're going to have to use a uh, supera. I don't think a zumbra is going to help you here. Down. We'll take a look. We'll take a look with the picture. So give us the supera distally. Either way, we're going to treat the distal first unless we're going to guess the, the 5-0 supera distally. Yeah, I know. So we're going to have to go down again. We'll go double negative here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you walk this out, guys? Yeah. So remember, when you do multiple inflations of all these DCBs, be careful when you pull them out over and over and four because they, they tend to accordion. So just be careful. Uh, I think it's just good practice to go double negative a couple of times before you do it. Give me a DSA now, guys. So we're on Angiomax. I'm not so worried about my ACT. I don't think, I really don't think that's a thrombus. So we'll see how we are here. Yeah, yeah, I think we're going to stent that. So give me a, yeah. a 60120 uh, Zilver, please. For the 120? Yeah, we're going to cover it back because the DCB was down to what? It should be fine. 120 should be good. Give me a 60120 yeah. DC, Zilver PTX. So before we do that, we're going to superar the distal. So we're going to go down yeah. distal. Let's no, superar the distal. It? Give me a 50 superar first. Yeah. Why are you Oh, do, yeah. do, do distal first, the then come proximal. Yeah. No, no, he's saying take the filter out. I said not no, filter. Well, yeah, well, actually, I, I kind of like that idea because the, the wire is going to move with the uh -huh. superar. Let's get the filter out. Let's check the filter. So that's another thing Ray and I tend to do more than everyone is remove the filter when we superar stent because the wire is going to move. But you can so keep feeding so the wire at the same yeah, time. Yeah, I know. It's just more of a complex. So don't. We're old people. You know, you guys are young. Our, 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 what we can do is what we did in the live case. We feed them, we do a wireless supera. That's right. That's the <laughs> that's the way to do it, right? So you can see the filter is full. Yeah, it is. So we need to get that out carefully. I think it's okay. We can grab it out. Give me the, the yeah. will this fillet fit into this? Yeah, it'll yeah, fit yeah. into this. Yep. So we're going to take the filter out and leave the wire down. So if you have a dissection on the proximal end and you're doing, you're taking the filter out, you have to rewire it. Yeah. No, no, but you can leave this wire. That's the beauty of this filter. You can, so you can remove it. Yeah, you won't suck it. No, this you can remove it with this wire, yeah. yeah. I'll no, show no, you. I'm saying. This won't suck it. No, you don't want to suck. I mean, I don't think there's a lot of clot. I just think it's just slow flow. There's not, there's not a lot of clot. 60150, right? 60150, yep. And then, and then we're going to go ahead. So what are you using to retrieve the filter? Put me on corner, please. Just a retrieval device. The Ember Shield retrieval device. Mm -hmm. Yep, floor. Floor. Oh, yeah. What? Mag up, guys. So what we do with the beauty of this device is you can actually retrieve it and then save the wire. So there's the retrieval of the filter. And then we're just going to push the wire forward after just retrieving the filter a little more. That's good. And then get the wire right back into the spine right there. And then I'll rewire it later. And then just remove the filter. I think that's an excellent strategy to keep your, especially after you have dissected, entered, re-entered, and done the ballooning part, keeping the wire there and getting the filter out this way is the best way to Make sure uh, that you have the save yourself from all mm -hmm. the trouble. So now we're just going to rewire this. Show me, uh, give me a torque around this, this wire is damaged. So now we're just going to put this back into the posterior tibial, and then once we put it into the posterior tibial, we're going to go ahead and, um, and deploy the supera. You know, this is the advantage of, uh, you know, knowing your, your, your technology in what we're doing. So, floor. Leave it as where it is. Okay. Yeah, I think I'll if just leave not, it there. Right leave then. it where it is. It's okay. It's okay. We'll just keep feeding. You have enough, you have, you have enough support. Just, there's a bend there. And it's diseased? Yeah, there. So it takes the bend and then takes it back. 
All right, we'll leave it there. Yeah. It's fine. It's a loop. You can always, uh, but the Supera is going to move. Oh, yeah. No. It, we'll, we'll, we'll you know what? We're going to over the Supera. We can change to another wire. That's a good idea. So no, give me a, you, you know can't do that. Ah, oh, we did that this live. Is didn't we? This I is a five This is a five Yeah, you know what? Let's change out this wire. So give me, a, give me an 035 trail, uh, this one, uh, catheter. See, Karthik, well, this is how much PK listens to us. We talked about this give like me the 035 two minutes uh, ago. Uh, <laughs> that you can't do a wireless Supera. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great point, Vishal. Thank you. Just leave this one. It's okay. Just no, no, it's keep fine. Karthik and 035 Trailblazer, please. Or, uh, or, um. I think live uh, people don't people have. I think we have, when we do live cases, people don't realize how much we keep uh, um, wibbling on uh, PK's ear all the time. Like, don't do that. Would you forgetting that? You're forgetting this. <laughs> Show me down below, please. Well, Dr. Walker also said I can pull it out. Remember, <laughs> he's the man who. That's uh, true. It's a fair so. Idea. so it was if it was five five, I would have said it's okay. Now again, we are going with the same five zero. So we'll have the same issue. So, yeah, you can just keep feeding the wire in as they're deploying the separator. Yeah, but it's too close here, Vishal. Agreed. What bothers me is it's very close here. Now give me a give me a um, um, Spartacor. A new that. one, new Spartacor, please. Give you me want to do, you want to do a quick three yep. cc roadmap? I am exactly. Give some uh, nitron wrap on. No, I just need roadmap for now. Let's go roadmap, guys. Let's one second. It's good enough, Swar. So it's, this is again just a one step, it takes a little moment, but you know it's going to save you a lot of heartache down the road if, if your wire doesn't come back or you dissect this disease segment or whatever, you know? Well, yeah. Don't move, my love. Yeah, it's just it wants to go into that perineal, but no, I'm just gonna get my yeah, catheter down. Just wire yeah. careful. So that TP, P, TP trunk bifurcation is angled. Yes. So that's what gives us. A, I think Sparta core doesn't have that hydrophilic. That, that strength, it. yeah, nature of crossing it. Can we torque around this, guys? Sometimes you take a little extra step to do it a little careful. I think it'll pay off down the road floor. There There's your is. extra step. And then I'm just going to just push it down now. There it goes. Okay. Good. Now we can walk this out safely. Spartaco is in the foot. Off road map, guys. Give us the Supera now. Good, and we said, great. Watch. Mm -hmm. So now the Supera is going in. So what Dr. Guja is doing is very important right now. He's wiping down the body of the Supera. Um, is very important. Um, again, I think so deploying this on an 018 is probably better than an 014, but with this diseased tibial, yeah. I think it's probably not wise I to use I an I think 018. when Supera came in, um, nobody ever realized that wiping the body was actually very important. Actually, wiping the body of Supera is very important, uh, uh, especially if you're deploying in a very calcified segment. This vessel is okay, but if you're deploying in a very calcified segment, so, then it's So, okay. Karthi is going to go ahead and deploy this. Um, I, I think that, you know, we prepped the vessel well. I think oh, you can see here, I would go down a little bit more. Yeah. Mag up twice, please. So I think important right now to mag up a couple of times. There you go. I think that's perfect. Deploy right there. So you're going to see that now he's going to watch the geometry of, of the device. And I think, you know, the clinical decision making is very important. We're uh, about an hour into the this case. Is good. This is good right there. I like it. We're, we're about an hour into the case. We've got a 5.0 Supera, which should deploy very, very nicely in this vessel that's reasonably well prepared. So you can see here the, the, the cells are nice. I think, like you rightly pointed out, the biggest thing for Supera is priming or preparing the vessel well. If you do that, you'll have a great result. You know, and, and you know, you know the, the thing is we took the time to change the wire. Right. We took the time to do all this. 
And I, I think if you look at it, Ray, why don't you check on five and four? Okay, and four? Okay. So, so I think that, you know, I think here that you can set up in five, Ray. So I think you can see here that you have beautiful deployment of the Supera. And I, I think if you take the time, see, like if you had the wire at 20, now, well, you know, somebody's pushing the wire, you're worried about the wire coming back. Now you have nothing to worry about. You just deploy it confidently, knowing that the device is going to perform the way it should perform without an issue. So Dr. Guja is not worried about the distal wire. He's just deploying this the way it should be deployed without any worry. Now, this is a 120, so we might have to add another Supera there. So we will be stacking appropriately in that area where it's pretty calcified, right? And then, and then, and then, and then now he's going to go ahead and continue his deployment. You could see that, you know, it's, it's a great device when used appropriately. You just have to use it appropriately. It's a little stacking there, but yeah, which is good. I think that yeah. that's the area. Remember that we had to break yeah, it's back into. Yeah, a purposeful into. stacking, which right. I'm doing because that's the area where we had the most fibrosis, and that's the reentry spot. Correct. Right. So I'm trying to. You should get uh, once you stack up and then you come up. You should just set get like it's. It should be like as if you're taking a lead uh, lead pencil and drawing a lead line on both sides of the stand. That's how it should feel like the supera. It should be dark on the either side of the stem. That tells you you have uh, deployed uh, in an appropriate fashion. So we're coming right near the end. Yep. So I think maybe uh, maybe another super may be warranted here. Okay, good. Walk it out. Okay, show me the distal wire. So we might put another Shapira, Flora. Now you'll see whether the wire is moved. Should come down lower for me. See? All this. So what I'm saying, you guys don't listen to the old man. Nobody listens to an old man. Nobody push the wire. Yeah, you don't need to push the wire. Yes. That's why you prepare it. You prepare it, you don't push the wire. Why are you worried about the wire? Worry about the Shapira. <laughs> I tell you, I tell you, I tell you. All right, let's take a picture here and decide if we need another Supero or we may be done here. I, think we should do I, don't, I don't know. Let's go Lomec, DSA. Okay, DSA here. I think we have to look proximally too. There you go. Okay. Right there. Might be enough. Yeah. That should be enough. I think proximally we don't need a Supero. Beautiful. Okay, let's do our osteum now. Give me the, uh, let's take a picture here to see how this looks. Some recoil. Looks fine. Yeah. The What's that area in the middle there? What do you think? Oh, I don't know. Just do it. No. Why do it? Is that a goober? There's a little bit of D. Is that a, a little bit of dissection? Let's hit it here. Let's see this. If this is gone, then you know it's a goober. Nope. So it's not a goober. All right, guys, give me the the the, the Zilber PTX 606120. So we're gonna do stent the Zilber proximally, and then uh, just leave the patient after that. Yeah. So, you know, listen, this is combination technology. Watch out for the camera. Combination technology that has Remember, you DCB beat that area where there is a small dissection. Right, so I'm not so it worried. Should, yeah, it should be okay. It and it's just heal. a small dissection. It's not flow limiting. I would not go crazy on that. Okay, now let's go. If you, if you start doing it, then everything will look uh, dissected. So. Little, little dark. Need to come down a little bit. Right now, I don't care about anything but the ostium here. So, so what's your trick now for people who are doing this ostium nailing of the zilver? Especially well, when you I, 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 I think, I think the, the trick side. is first of all understand there's no such thing as ostium nailing. Um, that that you are going to have to cover the ostium. Let go of that, please. Uh, and then and then don't worry about it. Start get it going. Let it come back. 
play with it a little bit, and then decide where which fits. Okay. Okay. Now, what I tend to do in this situation is come off roadmap, mag up even higher, and now I've just gotten the silver going. Now, give me a little die. Okay. Now I got to go down a little bit. Die. Die. That's good, Aish. I like that. Remember, it deploys at the dots. Mm -hmm. Die. Ten back. Remember, you got to cover the ostium, right? Yes, yes, correct. If you don't cover the ostium, what's the use? Die. The best way is to know you covered the ostium is you have one start, one start going into the profunda, right? Yeah, I mean, the profunda here approximately looks Die. okay, so I don't think it's going to. Thank you. Beautiful. Walk it up. I mean, you know, there is no right or wrong, honestly. DSA, guys. Oh, it is DSA, right? Give us 6040 Dorado. DSA. Yeah, it's DSA. Okay. It is DSA. Inject. One stud. You can see that start yeah. moving into that. That's fine. Oh, you got it. Yeah. 6040 Dorado. Ray, how, how's the ostium? Awesome? Yeah, FFR? Wow, FFR is 0.7. It's yeah. significant. No, FFR is 0.7. Give some nice one, please. 65. Give some nice one, please. Ray, uh, Mike, did you take a nitro shot? Take a nitro shot? Yeah. FFR is Got it. Well, no, I'll come. They, they can't do it anymore. Who? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. My dad says that it's okay, no? Yeah, absolutely. Well, at least get the guide up and take a guide shot. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So now we're just going to balloon this. And as, as we discussed, there was tremendous recoil. Now, you have to fully understand that this Dorado may not make it into this tent. So yeah, let's see. I think that's the biggest thing with the I Dorado. mean, you can see it's biased to one side. The Dorado's a horse. We'll see. Okay. Uh, uh, so, so now get me, uh, uh, pull this wire out, get a super core. So we'll pull back the pull wire. The no, pull the wire out. Pull the wire out? Yeah. Get a super core, uh -huh, go in uh -huh. with a super core. See, there's an old Clint Eastwood thing that Elizabeth taught me when I was a fellow. Man's got to know his limitations. Can I have super you core, know? guys? So I think it's important that we have to know what have, what Supera's limitations is as well. And definitely Supera's limitation is clearly this. Liz, didn't you say that to me? That's what you did say, right? You're a big Clint Eastwood fan, huh, Liz? Big Clint Eastwood fan? Liz, before you say anything, you know, you know there are about 10,000 people watching. <laughs> I wish. Ah, ah. Okay, go. There right. you go. Let the stiff portion. There you go. Okay. Good. Go up, guys. Want to go down? That was good. Start here. Then we'll go down. We'll balloon this first. Liz is going to have some pain. Go up. Vishal, do you feel or do I feel like PK is getting off? He's doing things the uh, uh, reverse way today. <laughs> Okay, it happens with time. And 12, 14. <laughs> 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 with time. Okay. I love that. <laughs> okay, 10, 12, 14, 16, 20. No, you have to give him credit. He okay, was down. Up, up till 3 o'clock in the morning answering my uh, text messages. So. Down. <laughs> All right, now that's open for sure, as best we're going to get. So we're going to go down here and hit this one as well. It's not bad he answers your text messages. Go ahead. Well, no, that's not. The better part is he received, he had signal at his home. You know how it is. You know, the funny, the funny <laughs> thing is that Vishal actually worked late yesterday for the first time in his career. <laughs> oh. Ouch. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right, we're done. We're done. Don't go any further. She's having pain. Okay, low, low mag? It's not going to go up. It's going to recall. It's just going to recall. I just go up a little bit harder. You should be fine. Good, that's good. Okay, down. Nice. Down. 
All right, so we think we're done. Okay. <coughs> so we're gonna we're gonna just go low mag here and do a couple of DSA runs. Uh -huh. All right, so I think you know it's exactly one hour since we started this case. We've got we've gotten through a, a difficult SFA, uh, total occlusion. I'm just gonna pull this wire back yeah, to this level so. just to take a picture from here, <coughs> just to see how it looks. We know this tent, this tent is patent. Ready? Go ahead. Robust flow in the yeah. Profunda, good flow in the SFA. Again, you're not going to make it perfect. Let me see. One tick. No, One tick. Be. There you go. Yeah, I know, I know. I, I'm trying to make it. There you go. Okay. I got it. Okay. Pe pe people variance. could argue, why do you leave it? You have something there, something moving, looks like a dissection plane. I'm not going to treat that, you know. And we know that the stent was open before, uh, the supera. The only perfect way you're going to get a perfect result is to stent the whole segment. Uh, when you DCB it and atherectomize and DCB things, it's definitely not going to look the way. It looks as if it's a stented segment. But so that's I think okay. It's, uh, I think that's okay. No, I think in this case these are not coronary vessels, Inject these are peripheral vessels. The flow rates are very high, and especially with DCB, these dissections will heal. I'm going to do it again. She's moving. <coughs> Want to give some nitro No, it's okay. It's there. <laughs> you might have to take a yeah. catheter oh. down to get rid of No, but I think it's, it's okay, Vishal. I think we're good here. No, I think we can see the flow very well. But, I mean, flow there, you just have to take a better there it is, see? Nice. So you don't need to see anything. I think overall very good. I think that I that DP will open up. I think, listen, I think this is a very good result. While Ray gets the, the stuff out, I just want to go over kind of our, our synopsis of this. So I, th I, th I think, you know, in this particular patient, you, you know, it. Dr. Kapoor, myself, it. and Dr. Guja, I mean, showed you, um, you know, a very, very complex SFA. So, you know, when, when you look at a lesion such as this, you, you have multiple decision-making things that you have to do. You have a very diseased osteum. You have a very diseased entire SFA, occluded distal segment, up to the level of the, uh, let's say, the P1, P2, P, P1 segment. So, therefore, now, how are you going to treat this? First challenge is crossing the lesion. So, we demonstrated the logic between using the standard loop, loop wire technique, pushing it through, versus a more finesse technique using a little bit more equipment, but clearly showing how you can enter in the proximal. We made sure that we, 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 used the, we used the Viance in the hope that it would go all the way through. Unfortunately, at, 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 as we got to the, the reconstitution zone, we were unable to get through with the Viance. So we decided to go with the, with the outbite catheter, and you saw how we kept it really proximal, not extending the segment all the way down. Even though our goal was to treat that, that, that segment that was diseased in, into, into, the, into the, uh, the P1 segment of the pop. However, you have to understand that if you, if you go with an 035 wire, say, I'm going to treat that anyway, so let me dissect it, the chances are that you might extend the dissection plane into the P2 segment of the pop. So, so err on the side of, of, of being conservative and then take a look. Karthik, can you look at room five, please? So, so, so therefore, err, err on, the, on, on the side of being conservative, even though you may spend a little bit more time with, uh, and, and equipment. Second, once we got through, we had to decide between what's the therapy, okay? So, so in this kind of case, if you look at this long segment with, with uh, you know, claudicin, with, with occlusions and stenosis, with osteal involvement and popliteal involvement, if you scan through the data, there is absolutely no data to, 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 for you to say, hey, I have level one evidence to say that this works and this doesn't work. We don't have that at this stage. So how can we you know, use the knowledge that we have in order to give the maximum therapy for this patient? Well, first and foremost, we know that we have data published in peer-reviewed manner about the use of a distal protection device. So we use the distal protection device based on our own data here at Mount Sinai. We chose the Abbott device because th that device allows us to have the wire distally and move the, move the wire independent of the filter while we're tracking this. So that's the first thing. Second, we said, listen, we created a dissection place. We did subintimal reentry technique with an outback catheter. Likely, you're going to need a stent. So we know that the data shows in the, in the flexion zones and the patency, even though it's registry data with Superb, shows that the Supera stent works quite well in this region. So we decided to use a Supera stent. So at that stage, we decided to use a DCB without data. 
We know that there's no data with DCB and Supera. Mm -hmm. However, we extrapolate that DCB is going to help in the complexity of this lesion to keep this open. So we did do a 5 DCB, one-to-one -one expanded it, looked for the expansion of this, and then placed the Supera beautifully there to cover that plane. Second, body, the SFA, and ostium. Our goal initially, atherectomy DCB. Again, no data. What we do have is data to suggest that DCB works, but we were hoping in this complex long lesion extrapolating from the definitive AR data that these long lesions may, atherectomy may add value. Reality and other studies such as reality will help us to understand whether this truly does have a role. But at this stage, we are extrapolating and we felt we did atherectomy followed by DCB. When we did DCB of the, of the mid, looked phenomenal. When we just ballooned the prox, looked very, very dissected, terrible. At this stage, we have to stent. So rather than use another DCB, you use a Zilver PTX stent. The question could be, why didn't we use a Supera? We didn't use a Supera because it, nailing the ostium with a Supera is not the easiest thing to do. So even so, we knew that with a Zilver PTX, we'd have good, good patency, at least uh, the drug delivery with scaffolding. At this stage, we went ahead and did that. Completion runoff was great all the way down to the foot. So, you know, in a short case, you know, about an hour and 10 minutes now, we were able to demonstrate all these complex decision-making processes, different technologies for you to be able to use um, in your practice. As far as antiplatelet therapy, you heard Dr. Kapoor, what he does, you heard Dr. Gujo, what he does. Our recommendation here at Sinai is for you to follow the guidelines. In this particular complex case with DCB, with, with uh, Supera, with, uh, um, uh, what is it called, uh, uh, Zilber PTX, it probably is, um, prudent to give error on the side of prolonged uh, 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 dual antiplatelet therapy versus a shortened duration of antiplatelet therapy. So I leave that to you guys, but clearly I think that it, it, this case illustrates the complex decision making process, how you can marry technology with available data to treat your patients uh, in the optimum manner. Again, I thank you very much for your attention and I'm gonna turn it, off to, uh, turn it back to Vishal, but I do wanna remind you, and I know he is as well, about our next uh, a live case demonstration at the end of this month, and we will continue to bring you more challenging cases. So I thank Dr. Guja, Dr. Kapoor, and obviously the team here. Michelle, we'll see you, see you soon, and we'll sign off. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, PK. Uh, thank you, everyone, for whoever joined us for this live case uh, for uh, this month of July. Like PK said, we have another session coming up in two weeks, July 26th, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time for our, uh, annual, uh, for our monthly uh, live intervention case. You can also go on to our website, peripheralinterventions.org, to review all the cases in the archive section, uh, including the previous cases and also from the Link Mount Sinai Symposium we had recently last month. So please do, uh, do give us your feedback, email us, leave us comments, join us, call us, and uh, we'd love to see you back again too, in two weeks. Uh, thank you, and have a great week ahead.